Wait, that's spelled different? But why are you asking about this? It's like personal, I'm like, I didn't mean it! I haven't heard that one. Mm -hmm. It's weird, there is a difference. I never thought of that. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the differences between the English and American language, even though it's still technically... They're both English. They're both English, but how I say English and English, <laughs> because obviously you guys know this, there's quite a few differences. Yes, which I feel like we know some of them, so we might be able to play along and actually guess them before they actually get told to us, but I'm not sure. I feel like there's still a lot we don't know. This was just a random video that popped in our um, the feed, so I wanted to check it out. Before we get into it, though, I do want to say there is actually has been a few times when I'm messaging people from the UK and like the difference in words actually, not they don't really cause a problem, but they just cause confusion. Yeah, it's like, I gotta ask about that because I'm not sure. There's been so sometimes people like will do like dot 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 and I'm, like I ask like, why all the periods? And then they came back and like, uh, why are you asking me about my like... Oh, so personal... they don't use that. No, no, the... The, the word they use is full stop. Okay. Full stop at like the little dot at the end of a sentence. Uh huh. We call it periods, but they call it full stops. Oh. So that's like no. a conversation I actually had one time. I was like, uh, why all the periods? And then she was like, like taking it back, work. like, uh, why are you asking about this? It's like personal. I'm like, I didn't mean it. We'll see what this video has. Uh, hopefully we learn some new ones, but and I And not get into trouble again. <laughs> true. The video that we are reacting to is called How Are British English and American English Different? Let's get into it. British English and American English have numerous varieties. In other words, various accents and dialects. Well, yeah. So for the main part of this video, I'll try to focus on the most standard non-regional variety of each one. Disclaimer, I'm not American. I'm actually Canadian, but I'm confident say, that we will someday accent. be Americans after the invasion. <laughs> standard Canadian English is very, very close to general American English. So I will say the American English samples myself, unless there's some specific need to distinguish between American and Canadian pronunciation. There are several ways in which British English and American English are different vocabulary, accent, spelling, and grammar. Vocabulary. Oh yeah, I'm sure we'll get into it, but yeah, there is actually the the whole thing with the spelling too. It's yeah. like the same word, but spelled differently. There's several that I didn't realize were spelled differently for them. Like color? Well, we, well I do color. I forgot which one it was, but it was something different, and I'm like, wait, that's spelled different? <laughs> Let me just throw a bunch of examples at you. In the US, people generally say garbage or trash, while in the UK, they generally say rubbish, mm -hmm. both literally that. and figuratively. The game was rubbish. Americans go on vacation, while Brits holiday. go on holiday. And yeah. that's also possible in American English. In the See, US, I've never heard that in our language. Never, We've never called it holiday. What do you mean our language? It's just in English. In our English. We always say go on vacation. I know, but he said it also works in American English for Well, holiday. we don't represent 370 million people. People rent apartments, while in the UK they rent flats. In the US, if your apartment is at street level, then you live on the first floor, and the yeah. person above you lives on the second floor. In the UK, you live on the ground floor, and the person above you lives on the first floor. Yeah, That's that one is, that, well. That threw me off a few times while we were there. Yeah, I was gonna say, because like, before we did the reaction videos or anything, I had no idea that that was a difference. Right. It is kind of weird though, because I have seen elevators here that have that system. Really? Yeah, G for ground, first, second, third. If that person above you is unable or just too lazy to take the stairs, in the US they'd take the elevator. In the UK they'd take the lift. When you're bored at home, in the US you might turn on the TV, while in the UK you would turn on the telly. <laughs> ah, oh, Pauly Pauly Towers. Towers. Nice. Oh, of course they show the Kardashians, my gosh. <laughs> when you step outside of your building to go for a walk, in the US you might walk on the sidewalk, while in the UK you walk on the pavement. Oh yeah, I remember that. And if you're tired of walking, in the US you might take the subway. In the UK, you take the underground. In the US, it's perfectly okay to wear pants when you're riding the subway. But in the UK, you'd better wear some trousers too, because pants means underpants. That's right. And specifically, women's underpants <laughs> are sometimes referred to as knickers in the oh, UK. Oh, okay. I didn't realize knickers was more specific to women's underpants. Yeah. Okay, I knew it kind of referred to undergarments, but I didn't know it was more specific to women's. Interesting. We'd call those more like panties? I guess, yeah. Maybe. So, when someone overreacts to something, in the US you might say, don't get your panties in a bunch. Yeah. yeah. But in the UK you would say, don't get your knickers in a twist. Okay, yeah. Paul, how dare you be so crude? Now I can't show this video to my six-year-old students. Oh, don't even worry about that. They'll just watch it on their phones during recess. <laughs> Going back to the word pants for a moment, it can also be used in British English as an adjective, meaning something is crappy or it sucks. For example, that. that album is pants. 
in American English, you might say, that album sucks. I haven't heard that one. Accent. Mm. So for the US, I'll try to focus on general American English, and for the UK, I'll try to focus on received pronunciation. These are the accents you're likely to hear on CNN and the BBC, respectively. Okay. R sounds. American English is rhotic, meaning that R sounds are always clearly pronounced. British English is non-rhotic, meaning that the R sound is not pronounced unless it's followed by a vowel sound. Listen to the difference. My father's in the car. My father's in the car. Let's focus on two words. Father. Father. Car. Car. Notice that the final R sound is not pronounced in British English. Father ends in a simple schwa vowel, like father. And in car, the vowel sound is lengthened in place of the R sound. Car. Now, the thing about British non-rhotic <laughs> accents that I find pretty wild is something called the intrusive R. That means that people sometimes add an R sound to a word that doesn't actually have one if it's followed by a vowel in the next word. For example, in the sentence, I saw a film. In British English, it sometimes sounds like this. I saw a film. So you can hear oh. that there's an R sound connecting saw. I've heard, I've heard yeah, that. Yeah, that's I weird. I never noticed it, but like now that he just showed that, like, yeah. Yeah. So you can hear that there's an R sound connecting saw and ah. Uh. I once had a British on-the-job trainer, and I remember she said, Hello, my name is Pauler, and I'll be your trainer today. I remember thinking, Pauler? What? You can't say your own name? But it wasn't just her, that was the intrusive R. T mm. sounds. In British English, and again, I must emphasize that I'm talking about the accent yeah, referred to as received pronunciation, T sounds are pronounced as hard Ts. In other words, voiceless T sounds. In the US, they sometimes sound like an alveolar tap instead of t, an alveolar stop. Mm -hmm. This normally occurs in an unstressed syllable between two vowel sounds, or between a vowel and a rhotic sound, like an R sound. So in the US, people say butter. In the UK, right. they say butter. In the US, butter. stop fighting. In the UK, stop fighting. You may have also noticed that the O sound in the word stop was a little different. Which brings me to O sounds. In the word stop, the American O sound is an unrounded vowel, ah, while the British O sound is rounded, aw. Oh. Another example, hot. Hot. There's also the O diphthong in the word no. In it's weird, there is a difference. I never thought of that. Ah, 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 ah. Do you hear it? I see, I see it. <laughs> There's also the O diphthong in the word the no. In the UK, no. In the UK, the sound is a schwa followed by an uh, as in put. Show. Show. A sounds. In other words, sounds represented by the letter A. Ah, in UK English, normally becomes an a ah sound in American English. For example, in the UK, half. And in the US, half. Words with a ah in British English remain pretty similar in American English. In the UK, cat. And in the US, cat. An exception is a small set of words in which the A is followed by a double R, in which case the vowel is pronounced as E eh in the US. In the UK, marry. In the US, Mary. Because of the difference, in the US, Mary and Mary sound the same. K yeah, Mary. Mary and Mary. No, like, we Mar usually Mary, yeah. We Mary. I can only say Mary. Yes. He said Mary, like, oh, it's a merry day, and married. They sound the same in the U.S., which they do. Oh, uh, okay. That's what he was saying. I see. He wasn't saying spelled different, they sound He wasn't the saying was well, because how we pronounce it. That is interesting though, because it's like more than just the accents. It's just how we pronounce things. Mm. But it is just it's just so interesting seeing that broken down and actually understand like oh that's why certain things sound totally different even though it is spelled. Mm -hmm. It means the same thing. It's just how we rule our tongue or whatever. Yeah. Just how we're raised in yeah. our region or whatever. Like that's why we sound. That's why we sound. So that's how we sound. Oh. American and British spellings are largely the same, but there are a few notable differences. This is in large part because Noah Webster, whom the Webster Dictionary is named after, made an effort to reform English spelling in the 1700s in order to make the words spelled the way they sounded. This resulted in some spelling changes in American English. Most, but not all, words that end in RE in the UK end in ER in the US. For example, center, theater, meter, somber. Some words that end in NCE in the UK are spelled with NSE in the US. License, defense, offense. Some words with OU in the UK are spelled with O in the US. Me. Color, favor, right. honor, 
labor. It's just, yeah, there's just O U R for. Well, yeah, it's like an extra is. letter. Yeah. Etc. The ending I S E became I Z E in the US. Organize. Apologize. A similar change also occurs in other contexts where the S is voiced. In other words, it makes a Z sound. Analyze. Cozy. There are verbs ending with L that take a doubled L in British English when a suffix is added. In American English, there's no double L. Traveled, cancelled, marvelous. If you're wondering how the last one fits in with the others, remember that marvel is a verb, and then an adjectival suffix is added to it. Huh. Grammar. There are only very minor grammatical differences between British English and American English. Auxiliary verbs. British people use shall for the future much more than Americans. As well as to ask for advice or an opinion, some difference in preposition use. I'm actually kind of curious if that's still the case over there. Yeah. I don't. I really haven't heard that. It sounds more proper. It's yeah, like, no, for sure. Like, shall I do this or shall we go do that? Well, we used to like if you look at any of our old documents or whatever, yeah. it always says shall though. It's like the, an old English. Yeah, it's just old English. But I'm just I am kind of curious if that's. I mean, I guess this video's not that old. I think I've heard, heard a few people use it that way. Because hmm. I, I don't ever use the word shall, usually. Yes. As well as to ask for advice or an opinion. Some difference in preposition use. In the US, people say on the weekend. But in the UK, they say at the weekend. And in the US, people say different from or different than. But in the UK, they say different from or different to. There are some different hmm. past tense forms. For example, in American English, the past tense of the word learn is learned. While in British English, it's more common to say learnt. Actually, <laughs> both forms are used in either country, but there is more of a tendency towards one form. This is true for huh. other words like dreamed versus dreamt, burned versus burnt, leaned versus leant, etc. Another mm. example. In the US, the past tense of dive is usually dove. In the UK, it's dived. Maybe the American huh. form developed by analogy with drive and drove. Anyways, differences like these are not consistent, but you'll notice some different past tense forms here and there. Past participles. Sometimes past participles have a different form. The most well-known example is for the verb get. In the US, there's get, got, gotten. But in the UK, it's get, got, got. Both forms, got and gotten, have existed since the Middle English period. But gotten has <clears throat> fallen out of use in the UK. Got can be used in American English in the form have got, but with the meaning of have, not have received or have become. Because it'd be have gotten here. I yeah. haven't gotten the eviction notice yet. I haven't got the eviction notice yet. All right. Let's... I actually do kind of like that he has uh, a British person yeah. saying the other ones as opposed because obviously him being Canadian, but he, you know, so many videos like they do the yeah, it's an American talking about British. I mean, even if they're knowledgeable, it's just mm -hmm. not the same as having an authentic person saying it properly. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't got the eviction notice yet. All right, unless, let's he's just, unless he's just doing a really good accent. He could be. Check a couple more sentences and see what we encounter. In the US, I think we need a lawyer. In the UK, I reckon we need a solicitor. You'll notice right, that a couple solicitor. of words here are different. A solicitor just sounds more menacing. It does. I don't know why. British people often use the word reckon, which means think or suppose. Americans mm. know this word, but rarely use it. And while well, unless you're a hick. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Unless you're from the deep south, is I reckon they do use that word a lot. <laughs> Americans would typically refer to a professional legal consultant as a lawyer. In the UK, they often say solicitor, which is a type of lawyer that does consultation. The type of now, lawyer... Don't we have a word for solicitor? Isn't that we someone use the word who goes... solicitor. Yeah, but that's usually going from like door to door, like someone who solicits their business or something. Yeah. yeah. But they did say that this, he was just saying that this was um, a certain, just a certain type of lawyer, whereas the otherwise is a kind of bar barista? <laughs> barrister? Okay, I see. The lawyer who represents you in court in the UK is usually a barrister, while in the US they're usually referred to as attorneys. Right. Another sentence. In the US, I'm going for a beer with my friends. In the UK, I'm going for a pint with my that. mates. Yeah. Notice that British people often say pint, where Americans would say beer. Brits also say beer as a countable noun like this, but pint is frequently used. And notice that Brits often say mate, where Americans would say friend. The differences between British English and American English might seem surprising or amusing, but remember, in this video, I'm zooming in on the differences and focusing on them. For the most part, they're actually the same.
There are some minor differences in vocabulary and pronunciation and grammar and in spelling, but any native speaker with a little bit of exposure to the other will quickly adapt to these differences and be able to understand the other variety without any problem. The differences are sometimes greater if we focus on regional dialects and sociolects of British English and American English. While most Americans probably have no trouble understanding received pronunciation, they may have some trouble understanding Cockney English or the Geordie accent of Northeastern England or other varieties. But as far as standard non-regional speech goes, I'd say that the differences are minimal. However, learners of English who focus on one of the two varieties will likely have a little bit of trouble understanding the other until they gain significant exposure to it. Mm. That was a really good video. I really appreciate the breakdown of mm. it because I hadn't seen that before. I, like, I knew about the different spellings and the different some of the different pronunciations. I knew actually, pretty much all those alternative words. Yeah, but I've actually seen it broken down and then the sentence structure was very interesting to watch. So glad we checked it out. Yeah. Or like I said though too, like the example I gave in the beginning of the video, it's like sometimes it still happens like, or someone will ask me like, what do you mean by this? And like, mm -hmm. quick clarification. I feel like it's not so much the words being used differently in the other dialects. I feel like it's more the accent. Yeah, because it could still be the same word like color, but depending on the accent, it's going to sound like they're saying it differently. Like it's a completely different word. Especially if you go like into Scotland <laughs> and the way they, their accents are so thick, they all sound really different there. I don't even know how they would pretend now it's color. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out with us. Uh, let us know down below if you learned anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and as always, it's just nice checking out the differences. Yeah. Uh, sure. Very similar, but very different cultures. It's always fun doing these type of videos. So anyway guys, with that being said, we're gonna wrap up this video and call it a day. Mm -hmm. So anyway guys, thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next one.